Hey there, and welcome back to the Train of Thought, an educational monster train series where we fight the divinity in every run. So, unfortunately, I have to work this weekend. That is that is the crux of my intro today, where I have to do proposal work gross because I was so busy last week that I finished my major release of the, without going into too much detail, the software that our company maintains. Uh, I just finished the release last Friday. Incredible news. Uh, and... The unfortunate thing is I had other tasks to do and I just could not get to them. So here I am about to work on Sunday for a project, a proposal piece that is due on, at 11 a.m. on Monday. So I better do it tomorrow or I'm going to have a bad time. And and it, uh, fortunately, I do get paid for it, right? So it's like I can take Friday off for free after having done this. So it's not like I'm being forced into overtime or something. But uh, at the same time, it's still really annoying when it comes up. It's nice having a weekend where you can just kind of vibe and not worry about whatever else is going on. And then having that kind of chopped up like this is always a bummer. So... It is what it is, I suppose. I don't really have anything else to add to this particular discussion. It's just kind of something that I have to deal with, and it's on my mind, so... Woof. Anyway, what are we doing? We're playing Monster Train. Our previous run was with this guy, Penumbra. It was a pretty decent run. It brought us up to 263 wins on the series. We had a Horned Warrior infused into Railbeater with Quick and Multi, and I think there was a plus 10 in there, too. Uh, we had three copies of them with Ashes of the Fallen and Resonant Shard, Welder Helper infused Endless Fledgling Imp. So a lot of pieces there, but basically it was completely nonsense. Uh, there was a burst of a Transcend Imp in there as well, which was nice. And the other thing is that it was a lean deck by the end, very consistent. Penumbra did contribute. We took a lot of space. We made it work and it was solid. It was good. A uh, very powerful run overall, cleanly got the victory and gets us past Umbra. So we're moving on to melting, not terribly much to offer as far as Rector goes. I'm kind of, my only hope for this run would be one that doesn't take a million hours to play out. But, you know, sometimes it happens, right? You get a Dark Calling run that's maybe just a little bit not optimal and you have to deal with it taking forever to get through. But... But we'll do it. So, as always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's play some Monster Train, see what we roll into today. Nice and short intro for those of you who like them that way. Incredible. Let's click the button. Yep. All right, not bad, not bad. I'll take it. Okay. All right, hope you're all doing well today. I've been feeling a little bit cruddy, and it's Largely because I have I got all my vaccines updated just this past weekend or actually this past week It was on Monday for me and I'm the kind of crazy person that does all of them simultaneously So I've got a veritable laboratory of medical science going on in my body right now and uh, it's just going nuts and it's the thing is that I, I feel just cruddy enough to not feel great but at the same time, not bad enough that it's going to stop me or make me go to sleep or have to just like take days off or anything, right? It's like you you don't want to just lay in bed all day because you're still like fine enough that you want to do stuff. So it's a little bit odd. It's kind of that weird space in between feeling bad and feeling good, but it's fine. So here we are. Let's play some Monster Train. Let's make it work. Hopefully no one else is dealing with that. Uh, though I will say for anyone in the United States, they did update their, the United States have has a new uh, COVID booster that I would highly recommend, modified for this particular year's variants. So that's exciting. I did, I did update that as well. So hooray there. All right, let's play Monster Train. Today we are default melting, default awoken. It's fine, right? I don't mind restores, nothing wrong there. The only downside to this clan combo is no reach to the back line, so we'll be mindful of that. We're fighting Pushback Talos, Curse Arcus, Chaste Seraph. We're definitely not leaning into restores based on that, but it is something we should keep in mind, I suppose. 
Our starting cards are really good. We have Molten Encasement, Razor Sharp Edge, Memento Mori. I could definitely envision some kind of a Dark Calling angle here. Awoken has very good supporting units for it. Four out of the six uncommon banner units are excellent for Dark Calling synergies. Uh, Animus of Will and obviously the Sweepers are the best. But at the same time, Animus of Speed is also fine. Uh, you're still looking for multi-strike, absolutely, but that's one of the reasons Animus of Will is so good, but you're happy about this anyway. The Molten Encasements will do a lot of work at keeping Rector from dying, which is good. Temples today are two, three... Oh, wait, no, that's wrong. Three and four, whoops. Six, seven, and eight. So five temples means we can play it very chill. However, we take our shards, which is fantastic. We love to see it. We do have a removal dupe on the magic side on ring eight, which is fine. I plan on having to take at least a couple of those, especially if we end up on dark calling, we will need to take a few. Steel and magic on seven, no removals, both sides kind of equally mediocre. Nothing really remarkable to call attention to. Dupe on six is pretty weak, but it has a horde. Competes with a good steel shop with vortex though. I think the steel shop's probably better here if we can use it. Trinket shop with no money on five, a little early in the game. Might be a little difficult to pull off value from that unless we see a burst of cash elsewhere, like from a cave event or something. But but yeah, I suppose we'll see. The magic shop competing with money in cave is probably better. We'll see. Magic shop, again, no steel here on either five or four. So we get the double steals early, which is nice. Magic shop on four with an awoken banner. Probably need to look at that, but we'll see. Vortex Horde, pretty good if we can. If we don't need anything there. I definitely want to look for Awoken Banners. There is an alignment here with the Steel Shop on 2, which is great. There's a Remnant Banner on 3. You could still do something like, for instance, Animus of Will Infused with Pair of an Enforcer. Something like that is totally viable here. So we'll really see what we get. And if we have Dark Calling support, that same idea also works with Wickless Baron. So we'll see. The Horde today says Memorial Fund or Melting Spout. Definitely Memorial Fund. We have enough units that will be dying. Uh, this will pay out quite a bit of money and put us ahead. This might actually make that Trinket Shop valid, so we'll take it. Definitely grabbing money. Always do here. Ah, bummer. I do not have any Burnout support. Burn Bright is a little bit l sketchy here. Accumulator, I mean, Harvest and then Pivot into Dark Calling is fine. We don't have great options for a full Harvest line here. I still think we take the Harvest because it's secure early game. If we have to throw him away and look for something else, like, for instance, Awoken Hollow into an Animus or something, that may be fine. We don't have great options here for stopping this Mark of Invasion from just murdering us, do we? I'm pretty... I'm I guaranteed to miss the collector if I do this as well. So let's actually just turn that off. For 25 gold, I'd rather catch the collector, right? So... All right, I do five. It's 19 damage right out the gate. It's not ideal. I'm going to go mid-floor here, I think, as weird as it sounds. Put some restores down. All right, this is fine. We'll put the drag up top just to get the collector... I'm going to razor sharp offensively here. Sure. One health left. Interesting. I'm going to go ahead and molten encasement middle. That's fine. I'd like to play a train steward up top, which does get the double tap kills here, which is good. I'm going to work on drag middle here. Try to push numbers. It's going to be real tough for us to actually stop this top floor. I can stop some of it, right? I can do enough to kill in front and then we take 10 damage. And that is a bummer, but is just gonna have to be it, right? This is the nature of the combat. Now, play the weight of contrition. I'm gonna argue for an offensive play with Razor Sharp here. Big swing, drag down, we get the kill, and we're fine. And we get some burnout in the same same motion. All right, taking 10, getting the collector is good enough. We'll take the draft here. These are all great cards, Wicklash, Hallow Drippings, Draft. 
I think Draft is the pick. It's multi-strike. If I miss multi-strike everywhere else, if I see the Dark Calling pivot, it's really important we have it. So we'll take that. Sting, Wildwood Sap, Steel Enhancer, Wildwood Sap. I don't know about that. I don't want to lean into it too hard for Chaste, but Sting would be fine. What if I take the Steel Enhancer? We're not drawing very fast. If I had Root Seeds, I might consider it. I'm just going to grab Sting, I think. It's a fine card. It replaces itself. It does some damage. It takes magic power, I guess. It's fine. I would like the Awoken Banner, please. Yes, and thank you. Let's see what we roll into here. Endless Burnout 1 is very powerful for the Stealth Tomb. Animus of Will. This is a difficult decision. Animus of Will is better if we eventually see Dark Calling. By a lot. But. Spike's boss on ring 2. Completely kills Animus of Will. That's bad. Right? We didn't take the Steel Enhancer. So. These Razor Sharps kill that. I think we go Shattered Shell here. And. I think we take the Endless into the Stealth Tomb. Yes. Shattered Shell here, I think. So money in the middle is actually good. I'm going to go ahead and Endless a Stealth Tomb here. I'm going to take the Wick Stone on it. We're not going to plan on the Self Infuse. We probably, we might need to eventually for Chase, right? But if we end up on Harvest, right? It could be useful to hold out for a Remnant Host here. So... Let's load this guy up. We're going to spin this. Multi-strike means we take money in the middle. Absolutely. Okay, we're cooking now. Cooking on the Shattered Shell. Great. And I think we hang out there. We're going to go to the Steel Shop, see if we can see something cool, right? Because I have Harvest Rector, I do not need... And Stealth, by the way, and Stealth. I do not need a Quick on this guy. Would take... Another multi-strike might take a plus 25. Don't see it here, so we're not going. I could have, of course, done it before, but the order of operations there, I think, was important. And leaving a spot for a possible second plus 25 is pretty big. This guy on spikes is definitely going to cook my back line. 100% cooks my back line. Do we lose if I take spikes? I think so. I think it, I think he just gets absolutely cooked. So we're not going to do that. I am going to play top floor. I don't think there's really a way I don't. We're going to put Rector in front. Hopefully this is enough. We'll see. Maybe I draw a sting if I need it. We're actually okay. Great work. So I can just play a drag middle floor. I can actually sting upstairs anyway and save some health here, which I think is cool. We'll get some guys shot downstairs, and that will be fine. Great. Cool. Good job. Okay. Stealth Tomb, he's down. Great job. And we, we crush this combat now. We do want to keep our, enemy, our units dying because of the Memorial Fund synergy. So... We want to try to, like, I'm going to aggressively kill that backline to buy turns here. Which I think is cool. Just buy turns to draw things and get them shot. Right, like this train steward gone. Great work. Toss a razor sharp up top. We're cooking. Easy. Alright, good job. Cool, good. Managed to get the kill. We're making up a lot of this money with the Memorial Fund, which I'm very happy about. So we're doing good there. Wicklash would not be bad. If I end up on the Draft Infusion line, it will be good, in fact. We should grab this. There could be a minus two spell chain angle, something like that. Take the Vine Grasp. I need a ping. Yeah, just grab that. That's good. We're over 200, so I think I'm still happy to go to the Steel Shop. Looking good there. We'll take it. See what I roll into here. Large stone. Now I don't I want to avoid making them bigger. Right? Minus two is good. Intrinsic is not as good. I'm gonna go ahead and spin this shop, I think. I'm giving up the opportunity for that plus 25 in the, for the possibility of another multi-strike. 
It's a little expensive, but... Oh, we see it. Whew. Ooh, that's good. This means I don't actually need to go draft, and I could do something else. So let's actually look at the banner first. I was going to say Baron might actually be cooked here. This is really solid. We're going to take this, and we're going to turn this into a Hella, Hella line. We go... Multi-Strike 3 here, and I'm going to take a Baron Infusion here. And this should be good, right? With, uh, I have Razor Sharps, right? I'm not crazy? Yeah, okay. I was like, I'm pretty sure they're there. I have some means of buffing its stats, and it benefits from everything else. This looks great. I think this can win. I'm going to take a minus two. With this line, I think we've weaned ourselves off of Wicklash, so the minus two is going in Razor Sharp instead. I do not take the Intrinsic. We're going to go ahead and hit the caves here. Wax and Spike. We could go in on this, I guess. It's not terrible, I suppose. I'll just take the Awoken's Rail Spike instead, though, right? I think I'm just gonna do that yeah the only thing we have to really watch out for is how do I not die on turn one divinity before I have stealth up so we'll we'll need to think about that a little bit but that's not something we have to answer for another six rings or whatever so I think we're fine we're just gonna chill here at 60 we should absolutely crush this combat right as long as I can draft something to put in front of Rector when the pushback Talos ends up on the floor we should be just fine yeah, so, like, this is a bad turn, right? It's pretty unavoidably bad. Like, we have to put Rector in front to avoid getting auto-killed, but this swings our guys the opposite direction, which is bad. This means I'm very much dependent on... Yeah, Molten Encasement will have to do. I'm going to get my guy over four health, Sting middle. We're going to get folks shot. Okay, so this is the suboptimal, I would say. Right? I'm only taking four damage here, so we should be okay. We actually get the kill. The unfortunate thing about this is we are going to end up with a... We actually, the fact that we get these kills is kind of surprising. But we end up with a weird direction, right? This floor is in a strange situation, but we're okay otherwise. Our goal is just to get units killed, so that's fine. And they're harvesting like crazy, so we should be more than capable of winning here, I think. Yeah, I mean, we're doing some huge number of, amount of damage. Yeah, great. Dies, excellent. Baron is scaling health and things. We're doing fine. I can do Dreg here, self-ping it, then play my thing, then play the Razor Sharp. We're fine, right? We clear top floor, no problem. Doing 210 already, so it's pretty good, if I were to say so. We can freely take that, go ahead and heal ourselves. Cool. Honestly, this is a free win here. Feeling good about this particular combat. Great job. Doing 321 sweep damage. Looking real good. So, great. Excellent news. Devourer of Death is good if I weren't on a sweeper line, right? We would be thinking about this. It's not Shard Channeler. Another Awoken's Rail Spike is pretty much never bad, right? This card is essentially... I don't want to say unskippable, but if you have one Ember, it's worth using, right? It just replaces itself. It's fine. Make something else cheaper. It's good. I mean, I should grab it, yeah. What do we have? Steel Singer, Paraffin Thug, that would be fun if I had taken this, but I think the Baron is much better. Other Baron, nah, we skip here, I'm good. Goodbye, Steel Singer. I could maybe have pivoted. No, it would have been really stupid to pivot from here, though. Now, is it card draw? I actually don't know. It's coming up, new Curse, Curse Arcus. Can I play bottom floor? I can. I can play bottom floor, right? I don't care. Take draw. It's fine. Draw faster then. Cool, we're doing really well. I could go Magic Shop, look for some cheaper things here. There's nothing I really want. Holdover, I mean, it would probably just go into Razor Sharp, but it's not necessary. Let's just go to the right and remove some stuff, I think. See what the Horde is. Combustible Wax is 
bad for this particular run because of the Molten Encasement Burnout one. I guess I'm going to take Boon of the Blacksmith then. We'll remove two Train Stewards because they are large and difficult to play. They cost one Ember. Spell Chain into the Razor Sharp is excellent. I have a minus two Spell Chain. Fantastic. Tenon Piercing. I should really put this in the Vine Grass because... I can then give it a plus 10 later and achieve a 20 damage piercing reach, which is good, I think. I'll take it. I'm not going to go self-infused. We're not going to make that decision for a while, if we make it at all. Mm. Yeah, we don't see anything here that would justify the burnout pivot. The thing to keep in mind, there's really no reason to have Rector on this floor until we get to a point where like obviously now i might as well have him on the floor right he's a guy he gets big but we're relying on stealth for survivability so eventually you want to just throw rector away and dupe the baron infused shell now the obvious risk here is i do need to make sure i don't die on turn one so we will be thinking about that there is a non-zero possibility we play something like take space on ring six, play middle, rector tanks. That is very viable. So we need to play this a little bit close to the chest based on what we draft into. You know, like an intrinsic engulfed in smoke swings this and suddenly we no longer need rector at all. But for now, we're going to assume we need rector. At a minimum, I need him for the coming combats, right? Like, I don't have a second friend. And there's no reason to make a second friend right now. I could freely take this self, this seal of aggression. I'm not afraid. I have Harvest Rector. It's great. So it's five by two. I'm going to go ahead and... How do I want to approach this? It's train Steward Middle. I'm going to play Top Floor here. I realize this does cause some concerns. Put the drag there. Maybe I can self-ping it or something. Yeah, this will work out because I can go ahead and huge razor sharp in back. Great. We get a double kill. I'm going to sack some guys middle. It's fine. Plus four. No no spikes, right? No spikes. Yeah, all right. I'll take the other razor sharp then. All right, we're, we're definitely okay then. Rector will face tank for a bit. We'll be a-okay. And then we just molten encasement up here and it's super cruising. Definitely prioritize getting all your units killed. It's very important. We're going nuts now. We're going super powered. I can play the dreg, shoot the dreg, play the molten encasement, draw one because I might as well. And we are already well beyond anything we need to worry about here. The only thing that could threaten me at this point would be spikes, right? So we're over the elite heavies can't do anything to me. So we're cruising. Sack this drag. Seems good. No fears. We're fine. Play for stealth. All good. Nothing fancy. It's also playing for five gold, which I appreciate. We always like money. You know me. And then we easy crush this combat. Great. We're coming out ahead. Good. Okay, great. Yeah, encased ember? Absolutely. I have a tomb that's dying every turn. Incredible work. Crushing Demise is... an answer, but Remnant Host is better? Yeah, Remnant Host is just better. Yep, okay, I'm playing a Harvest line, so we'll do it. I'll take the Ensnare. There we go. I was like, I need something for mini-bosses. Let's grab that. Okay, I'm feeling decent against mini-bosses. I'm just selling this trinket. I don't need it. I'm definitely fine. Not leaking against those heavies. We're chilling. What trinkets could answer our dilemma? Or is there a magic shop answer here? We're definitely doing a Ring 6 Remnant Host into Molten Encasement pickup. An overstack for plus 25 health would also be a winner here. An overstack for sapstone would be a winner here. 
Overstack for Tiny Stone would be a winner here. I think we go left. The Magic Shop will provide some value. We can make some things cheaper. It's fine. A plus 10 would be good on Vine Grasp. I don't need anything fancy. I'm going to go left. I think there's enough payout here. Trinket-wise, they don't have answers for the one real threat that we have to this run, right? Which is simply Divinity Sweep. So plus 20 and consume i might actually use that for the record let's go ahead and look at the cave first see what we hit yeah okay for the greater good upgrade a unit this is actually easy i know what you're thinking why not sunderstone it's because damage is not the thing that's threatening me here i'm not gonna lose this run because i don't do enough damage especially with the remnant host in right like i could sunderstone and go super fast but you know what I could also do? I could also sap stone and guarantee victory. Now, you might think, oh yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and sap stone the molten encasement, right? No, 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 no. I'm saying sap stone the shattered shell, right? I play two of these on top floor and that is eight sap, right? That basically disables the divinity. It literally answers the one question I have and I think we cook and we like are super good in response to this. It's really easy to look at this and think it should be Sunderstone. I really don't think it is. I really don't think it is. This saves us so much heartache. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do this. I'm committing. I'm I told you it's good and I'm going to tell you and I'm going to show you it's good. Sap four to enemy units. Incredible. Let's do it. Fantastic. That's so much health basically. An incredible roll. Let's make a minus one into this razor sharp. Yes, it's 20 consume a restore. You might as well get rid of those. It's fine. The double stack. Double stack and snare is actually great here. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to re-roll holdover, huh? Holdover on that and snare. You can do a lot of damage with this, right? It does cost one, but I have a tomb that's dying, so I kind of don't care. Yeah, let's hold over this. Nothing walks on us now. This other minus one goes where? I don't know. I'll 20 consume another restore. I don't really need these. I'm going to go ahead and make Memento Mori cost two, so I actually consider playing it. It's pretty good. We'll take this horde. Feeling decent about that. Sap Tap is probably the pick. It's funny. I could have had Guild Marker. I'm going to take the Sap Tap, though. That's card draw. By a removal on a train steward. And we move on. Yeah, we move on, I think. I actually might buy this other removal. I actually am going to buy another removal on train steward for just get him out of here because I have $5 left, but I'm not afraid, right? I'm not, not feeling fear here. Heaven Seal. I have a double stack holdover and snare. I'm not really worried about it which I draw on turn one, which is very fun. Remnant Host, Rector, Shatter Shell. I might as well lock these guys down. It doesn't really matter. I want to get the kills upstairs, so we're chilling. Cool. Ensnare. Play the encasement. Sack a drag. Chill. Cool. All right, now my grand plan here, we want to hold on to the ensnare, razor sharp in back, burn dregs. Right? Yeah, burn the dregs, play the encasement for sure. I guess I'll draw a card. Sure, yeah, I'll do a million times more damage. Seems good. Great. This is plenty of damage. Everything is looking fine here. We then pivot to Stealth Tomb upstairs. Oh no, something's not dying. It's fine. It's rooted for 10 million years. No fear. Everything passes away. Great job. Cool. Excellent, in fact. Yeah, this is straightforward, I think, right? Tons of damage gained here. Draw a card because you might as well, I suppose. Rector is strong, but... Which is funny, I, I, I mean, it's good. 
right? But sure, just cook here. Completely truckloads of damage. It's good. We'll continue applying stealth. It's a great thing. Rector actually does exceptional work on this particular setup here because he is... He just absolutely goes mad with power as far as keeping my floor from dying. It's his whole thing. I'm gonna burn that. It's fine. Guy doesn't walk on me anyway. We just lock things down. Mini bosses are no fear. Stealth stacking is your friend. I'm not afraid of my hit points, which is great. And we should be absolutely chilling, right? This will look even better once I have the stealth, not the stealth, but the, what is it? What am I trying to say? Once I have Remnant Host packed in here as well. And I also just casually do 160 damage with Memento Mori, which is always fun. A lot of turns of waiting. She gets punched a little bit and then we one round it and that's great. So, Root Split Mask, sure, we'll take it. Seems good to me. Crushing Demise is nice. Mortal Entrapment is not a great answer to Divinity Turn 1, but we already kind of answer that. And Stealth is serving a similar purpose. Crushing Demise, I think, is actually redundant here with Ensnare. I'm just going to skip it. We're fine. Move on. Invigorating Solution is honestly a very good card here. You may ask why I need to draw really fast my first time through to hit that Stealth Tomb. Having this show up on ring on like turn one and then draw me three extra on turn two is actually great. So we will grab that. Now... I feel quite powerful. I think I could comfortably dupe here and win this run without much issue. But wait as well. Waiting is an option. The Steel Shop doesn't afford much. The removals are fine. I could thin the deck out a little bit, which is okay. What if I go to the right and just chill a little bit? This dupe, oh, is there a better dupe? Another option here that really speaks to me? I don't need more razor sharps, we're fine. I could wait for like a plus 25, possibly some other potential upgrade on the cave. I don't need this second guy now, right? Rector is happy to crush. I think we just kind of cruise, right? We're fine. Go to the right, we're gonna use the removals. I'm gonna drop Draft because he doesn't really help. He slows me down a bit. Uh, I'm going to drop the Wicklash. That's for sure going. I'm pretty much exclusively interested in things that speed me up. So Draft can go too. He's almost never the right pick here. We're going to go ahead and do... Eh, plus 30 is not bad. I'm going to go ahead and do that infusion of Remnant Host into the Molten Encasement. Which I think is super relevant. I know what you're thinking. Hey, wait, what about Chase? Chase is going to cut that stealth down, so we're not going to get a ton of turns. We at least get, what, four? We get four into Relentless. We'll do enough damage to kill. The more important factor is that I will actually put Rector in front on, on Chase, which means that he will have, like, a billion hit points. And so we'll guarantee win Chase. Divinity is when you bust out second Sweeper, man, right? Anyway, we're going to go ahead and do Remnant Host here. You might, you usually consider the self-infuse in response to Chaste, but we actually might not even need this just simply because the second guy, just simply because this is a lot of scaling that we're picking up. So, cool. Let's do that. Plus 30 here. I don't know how much this really asks, like, offers. I don't think it... This doesn't do anything that I really care about. Large Stone? No. I think with this in mind... I'm going to keep the other Stealth Tomb because it means I could draft either, hit either of these in a draw and we're fine. It's true. We could potentially dupe this guy as well and improve density. It's certainly an option. It's true. It's true. It's a pretty good option too. Do we just cut dregs? I think we might, but not right now. There's no reason. There's no rush for that. We might consider it though. Let's go ahead and move on. I think we're fine. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. All good. All good. Right, this is this floor. Now, unfortunately, it is a rally shard down here, so that is a bit of a bummer. Yep, not much really to add there. That is a bummer. Okay. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to play top floor. 
Man, that bottom floor, the rally shard on bottom floor is rough. I'm gonna go ahead and self ping out this dreg. It seems crazy, but I'm doing it so I don't have the ember drain. Oh, we actually just hit the bloody remnant hose tier, which is kind of nuts. Okay, that's cool. Now, unfortunately, it does mean that they are going to linger if they don't get killed, which is a bit of a bummer, but that's okay, right? We can just kind of stick this downstairs. They actually go nuts, right? It's They're going to start killing pretty much everything in kind of glorious fashion, so whoops, but it's fine. Take double here. Is this also... That's a rally shard, too. That is a bummer, my friends. That's okay. We're going to pop one just so I don't take the hit. I'm going to draw a card, I guess. I can't rally shard. I guess I could, actually, right? It's true. I'm actually going to do it and then just lock this guy down. That's fine with me. He's just stuck there. <laughs> I forget. That's funny. The guy actually pops out and kills him. That's pretty good. Let's... Remnant host upstairs. It's an interesting challenge that we're running into. Nothing is actually killing our guys. So, what do you do? I don't know. We'll find out. I'm going to play this guy middle and they'll burn out and it's fine. Getting a lot of curses here, but that's okay. Remnant host chills upstairs. This is the ideal turn, right? Where everything gets absolutely slammed. For just truckloads of damage. And then we we basically look and go, well, I guess I draw eight cards and that's fantastic. Ah, yes. I too enjoy when my one cost double stack holdover in snare suddenly has, you know, zero cost. That was what I was trying to say. We're going to have a hard time actually getting slays with our Shattered Shell, but I don't think it's going to matter. I don't think it matters one bit. Actually, we're going to get a lot of slays here, it turns out. We're doing 300 damage. Do I want to take three curses next turn? Absolutely, I'm going to take three curses next turn. Who do you think I am? Wee! I'm not even going to play the Sap Tap because I already have all the important stuff. Incredible. Oh my gosh. Four curses, what am I going to do? The same thing I always do. Play and do it again anyway. I could have done some cheekiness there. Killed it and then pulled it back, but I would have had stuff in the way, so... I don't actually think it matters all that much. Stab the boss, you might as well. It's all just free money at this point, and everything's looking pretty good. If we hit Wax or Snuffer, I think we blow up, right? So, seems good to me. I, I will play the draw. Look at that. I'm actually playing the game. Incredible. I do enjoy when a run is strong enough that I don't have to actually play the cards, you know? It's nice to not have to worry about it. It's like, ah, whatever, great, sure, sure, sure. There you go, hit that man for 300 damage with Memento Mori, which is totally popping off here. We're easily winning on this one. Like, yeah, look at that. Great. Just let it ride. Good job. Cool. All right, that's a lot of money earned. It's a lot of power. Feeling good about it. And, yeah, feeling pretty nice. It's not Hallowed Halls. Wickless Recruitment. Eh, it's fine. Formless Child... No. Skipping. Great work. Alright, now I could take space and play middle. I do not need to. I also think we are going to dupe the Shattered Shell. And then we're just not going to play the second one in... Right, we're just not going to play the second one on ring whatever it is. Four or five. Or chased. Set, so eight. Stealth is still worth playing into so yeah all right i think we're fine here space is not needed here we're gonna go ahead and take draw then i guess sure cool we're good on ember as well thanks to the what is it encased ember i do not need a steel shop let's go to the right we could see another overstack which would also be fun first hell pact is pretty cool 
because I do have double Awoken Rail Spikes here. And then Exploding Candle is going to find value, but we have a Sweeper, so I think it's just first Hell Pact and it's not even close. These cards now become nuts. We're going to see if we hit an Overstack here. Penitent Remains. I don't want to make the first draw through worse. It's actually very important to me. Ember Stasis is pretty easy to support here, though. Right? It is. I don't know how much it's helpful, though. It just kind of hurts my next couple combats for no real reason. I'm just not going to take this. I don't think this helps in any meaningful way. I could take the Ember Stasis, but it doesn't matter. Minus two. Man, you could... It's a magic shop? You got a remove consume in here? You got a double stack. I don't really care much for that. I'll 20 consume another restore. I'm going to toss a minus one at the Memento Mori. I think that's good. I don't care if it costs one because I'll draw it with the Rail Spike most likely. We're going to reroll here. Man, they do. Man, you could just straight up go infinite here. That's wild. That is super crazy. Okay, well, Monster Train, if you insist, put a plus 10. Vine Grass Breaching 23 is excellent. We'll remove consume this thing. X plus 4 is nonsense, right? Absolute nonsense. Wow, okay, great. And then I can just, what, remove another restore? I only need the one restore to trigger Sap Tap, so we'll cut that guy. I mean, we basically have an infinite right now. We're very close to it. Now they give me the Dark Calling Pivot. At this point, I'm just going to take the Accumulator 3 because I think it's going to be relevant for Chaste. It might not. I mean, we have, we have this card, which is just stupid. So, sure. Sure, Harvest 3, why not? I don't care. We're fine. Let's move on, I think. We're really strong, as it turns out. Yeah, great. I'm going to buy a removal. Just basically go infinite on this combat. You can't go infinite until I have a second one of these rail spikes. I could just do that, though. Second rail spike, and then what? What is your infinite, though, is the question. I just infinite on shattered shells. I could infinite... I could infinite razor sharp edge, killing the remnant host repeatedly in order to... I mean, I mean it's not terrible i guess and then i mean it sounds miserable but so let's just play the game a little normal it sounds we have an infinite basically if i go to the dupe and make another one of these it just sounds miserable i'm gonna save my money because i don't feel like thinking about that right now wow it sounds bad Whew. okay well fair enough let's go ahead and toss the Stealth Tomb down, play it out like this. We'll blast the Stealth Tomb, incredible. I'm gonna go ahead and just get some guys shot. Excellent news. Now, hey, that's illegal. I can't get this collector. There might be a way to do it. There might be a way to do it. I'm drawing seven right now. Okay, well, definitely putting the Remnant Host upstairs, I think. Actually, you know, I just ensnare this guy, and he's now locked down, which is great. We're going to go ahead and burn some cards here. It's cool. Definitely playing Stealth Tomb up top. I'm getting attacked four times. Might as well sack the drag. I don't kind of care that much. I'll draw four cards. Cool. Actually, totally fine. Razor sharp edge here. Fine. Okay. We are doing all right, I think. Great. I'm just going to go ahead and pop the armor guy, or rather the guy for the that was rooted. Doing okay upstairs. Let's go ahead and razor sharp a couple times here. And snare up top. Let's play the remnant host downstairs. We're going to go ahead and consume. I have the ability to draw 11 cards. Let's draw as many cards as I guess the game will let us. We are... 
out of control. 100% out of control. Great, I guess. Sure. Having fun with it. Shoot that guy on middle. Seems good to me. All right, this is, I mean, this is basically infinite town, right? This is, this is super infinite town. Like you shoot your own unit and then you go, hey, wait, that's illegal. Why would you do that? And then you go, oh, wait, that generates ember, which I can then use to draw back into this thing. Hey, wait, this is actually super hecko illegal. How are we doing it? It's too powerful to be allowed to live. I could razor sharp myself down at any point actually insane what is the plan no one knows play this guy out here the cool thing about this though in my opinion at least is that you have the ability to event you can see the infinite right i could actually vine grasp repeatedly and maybe make it work it's cheeky but fine i guess there's no reason to do it here but yeah well we can't do it here we don't have the second rail spike but yeah I'm basically drawing the same cards every single turn. I'm razor sharpening myself to zero hit points, essentially, right? So, it's cool. I'll draw a card, sure. And then we self-ping here, then we draw back around. And you can see how this works, right? You then ping out here, we use the razor sharp to aggressively kill my own unit. I then play the thing. At this point, I would have drawn the other one, and then I would just play it again, swing it around one more time. It's fine. So. Pretty straightforward, honestly. Pretty straightforward. We don't have to do anything too fancy here because we are actually just completely out of control, but... Theoretically, I could do it with Rector, but I will say it's slow with Rector, right? Very, very slow. I just straight up murder this man. I've killed so many guys, I might as well. And then draw 17 cards. Yes, hmm. Seems good. Pop one, razor sharp out the other. You drop in this guy. Great job. We get even more scaling. I actually managed to redraw here, which is extremely funny. Great job. In fact... What if I just killed my own unit? Hey, look at that. Fantastic. We're absolutely going nuts. Absolutely mad with power. Cool. Good. Great. I do not need to be this sophisticated in this part. We have so far beyond won this combat. I really should just stop putting... I'm not going to click the cards here because they don't matter. I'm just going to put the stealth tomb down so I, I get, you know value right i want to shoot him there's value in that and then we kind of just chill draw here fine i want to make sure i get the money from memorial fund but otherwise it's like fine great we did it cool send it neat all right am i just gonna go for the infinite do you guys want me to go for the infinite what would you do in this situation we win this run already i don't need to do the infinite but i could is the thing i could do the infinite the idea is if I take the infinite, I'm not going to want to draft more cards, so we just skip here. It's fine. Preserved thorns. You want an infinite on stings? Absolutely not. Edge prior? No. Skipping. <laughs> just infinite on stinging the boss to death. We chase the dupe for sure, no matter what. It is a magic shop. There could be another remove consume here. You don't know. None of us knows. It's a plus 30 here. Meh. Purge is good. Take a purge, I think. I could just purge a sting. Purge the restore. That's kind of cool. I actually think I don't need the other razor sharp edge. Light's gift. That's amusing. Don't do it. It's bad. Reroll. <laughs> Cursed vines is kind of fun. I could make Cursed vines deal six damage, which is actually enough to kill this particular unit, which is kind of funny. That could potentially be relevant. I'm going to go ahead and put a minus one. Oh, I already put one there. Never mind. What if I just remove stuff? What would I even hold over here? I think I'm just cutting cards that are bad. 
and I really don't think there's any trickery to this. Like, I think Razor Sharp Edge that's not the spell chained one is just going away. It's not beneficial to me, I don't think. I think I want to get rid of the restore here. Just give up the ghost on the sap tap, I think. That should be okay. Every removal is also beneficial from the perspective. Ah, I could actually moment I could use Memento Mori as the scaling element of this, right? So like Vine Grasp and the big razor sharp edge, I think are good. Those are four damage here. Interesting, interesting. I'm just going to go ahead and dupe this rail spike. It's just, I don't get the opportunity to do something this silly in a while. Like, ever, right? Yeah, it's true. Let's do it. Rail spike. All right, fine. Fine. Hold over. I don't even want this stuff at all. Let's just re-roll. If I see a remove consume. I was like, if I see the remove consume, then I actually have three copies of them. I'm just going to put a minus one into one of these guys then. It's fine. And all the rest of this money can just, I guess, go towards removal. So there's a purge here. Gosh, what do you even cut? Start cutting the restores, I suppose. I don't need them. Sure, I'll cut it. Great. You can't stop me. I still get one more removal. I wonder if that's just a drag. Could be. I think it's the sting, actually. Why do I have this, right? Oh, it's this restore. I guess I didn't get rid of this one. Interesting. We will cut that restore. Okay, fine. And then we can buy removals that really go ham. I mean, Memento Mori could be the actual payout. My cards at this point are two dead weights, two Awoken's Rail Spikes, Ensnare, Memento Mori, The Tomb, Razor Sharp, Sting and Vine Grasp. That's ten cards. So I cut the Sting here, and we're down to nine, and we should be able to cook pretty hard from this position, right? I do think the Vine Grasp is important here, in my opinion. I also think Razor Sharp Edge is going to add a lot of value. But we're pretty fast on getting set up here. We're pretty fast. Is Cursed Vines ever necessary or helpful at all? Maybe. Kind of. Is it better than removing two cards? Probably not. If I'm being honest. I mean, the cuts here are just going to be dregs because you might as well go faster, right? The restores are not as terrible because they can they draw me with sap tap until they go away. So I at least get, what, maybe four turns of sap tap card draw, which is fun. Yeah, I'll cut a dreg. I think the cutting of dregs is just worth more to me. Down to 20 cards in the deck. Very little left to really consider here. Toss a plus 10 at something, maybe? You might as well. Sure, you might as well. Eh, it's worth more points. Eh, it's worth more points. And this does not provide any meaningful value. Yeah, we'll just skip here. I guess I could also actually remove here. Huh, interesting. I don't think I need to do that. Go so super aggro. I could actually reach 200 shards. You want to make this a 200 shard run? I think we're fine to do that. Yeah, fine. Drag into a drag, sure. And then we take the plus 30 into one of these things that get consumed and it's fine, right? And then we just go ham. We buy the 10 into this guy and we're chilling, doing as much as we can. We should easily crush 200 out of 100, sure. Fair enough. We're making it a train wreck episode. Fine. Cool. There's always the possibility, yeah, you see, there's always this possibility that you don't actually draft the specific, you don't hit the infinite piece on turn one, right? Always a possibility. So, you gotta keep that in mind. Oh no, my stealth. All right. Okay, here is the plan. 
First, I would like the invigorating solution. I think that will be helpful. I would like to make space on this floor, but I actually think I really want to play out the remnant host and get it in the pool first, right? Yeah. I then want to put down this molten encasement on bottom. You may ask why. It'll come it'll become clear later. Let's play razor sharp, razor sharp, draw a billion cards. Great. This essentially puts everything the way I want it to be. Let's burn cards that I don't care about. Make the Memento Mori play here. It's good. Let's work on killing my guys in front. Drop the Molten Encasement again. Let's draw cards. All right, cool. We're going to go ahead and now razor sharp out one downstairs to generate Ember, which is fun. We're going to kill a guy upstairs. We're going to stab the other guy upstairs. I'm going to go ahead and Memento Mori the boss here in snare doesn't matter draw nine and that's that's my whole deck right that's everything here so now we shoot this guy downstairs right you can see how this is going cool the ensnare doesn't really matter we go ahead and memento mori draw nine which draws everything stealth tomb Shoot it out. Scaling is your friend. Let's work on this. Man, do I actually have this? I might just... I don't even need to play the ensnare, but I just don't have any cards left, so you might as well. I'm basically all but guaranteed to get it. So we do have to do a little bit of work to actually get it shot, right? So that's fair. The other thing is, I think we actually do eventually run out of space for this, right? 100 damage here. We do actually eventually run out of space on the train, which is mildly entertaining, I think, but... Then we get this guy, then we pop him. I actually, being honest... I could, I could honestly just vine grasp this man, this boss to death. I could actually just hold up. What if I just Memento Mori? Gosh, it's actually just that free, isn't it? Oh my god. Alright, we've killed enough enemies. Let's just kill him with Memento Mori. Cool. I was look I was overthinking this so much. This is actually very simple. Great. Well, is Memento Mori the payout I was thinking I would need? No. But it sure works. Look at that. Incredible. He's eventually going to die in, what, 33 more plays? This is actually not the slowest infinite I've ever played. Which is good, because this could have been very slow and painful. Anyway, we win. <laughs> so, fair enough. Fair enough, Monster Train. Fair enough. You got me. This actually is a little bit slower than I would like. But... I don't want to. I don't want to futz around, right? Because, like, I can I can get Memento Mori to hit harder, but why? This is enough. We already have the win. I just need to make it happen. I haven't put an infinite on this channel in a while. You have to understand that most of the time, infinites for me are not something I actively pursue, even though I know how to do them. Obviously, right? I don't actively pursue them because they're usually more risky lines of play, right? Think about it like this. You have to take gambles that potentially put you at risk earlier in the run, hoping you hit off of those gambles later. And sometimes you do, and sometimes you don't. But you need to make sure you don't accidentally lose when you do it, right? Now in this case, I had the Awoken's Rail Spikes because they made so much sense there was truly no reason not to do it and then after that it was like oh they showed me the first hell pact oh there was a minus two in the shop oh there was a remove consume okay well it's actually just over at this point right so at, the, at we had it's actually one of the reasons awoken's real spike is so good right because it's just 
very consistent. Oh, we win. Uh, it's actually just very consistent at winning anyway, right? It's so bloody consistent. It's a really good card, even when it's not an infinite player. And that's actually super important. Now, the entirety of this run is based on, like, our draw order here. How fast do we hit these rail spikes? I don't know. We'll find out soon enough, right? Find out soon enough. Like, we don't hit one on turn one. Oh, no. What have we done? <laughs> I live. Ah, uh, my guy lives. Incredible work. I am a genius. Look at that sap down to nine damage. Get out of here, you loser. Ha ha ha. I'm too powerful. Great, we got it. Cool. Play that upstairs. I'm going to stab him real quick. That seems good. Draw ten cards. Sure. Play everything. Draw every card remaining in your deck. Seems good. Wonderful. Burn out the cards we don't want. Stab the ones we do. Seems good. I do want to cook Memento Mori to a bigger number than this, which I think is relevant. So we'll just go ahead and do what we can here. I'm going to go ahead and toss downstairs, popping that. May as well. Drawing nine is unnecessary, but I will do it. All right, we're gonna pop here. I'm gonna burn the invigorating solution. I'm gonna go ahead and find grass, put it in the back. We'll put the molten encasement down, draw four. Cool, we are actively drawing enough cards. I would like more units to die, please. Thank you very kindly. There simply aren't enough cards in my deck to draw everything. I might as well play the Memento Mori, by the way. Not an, I have so much ember generation that I don't need to do this. So everything in this early stage of the combat, by the way, is entirely based on making Memento Mori hit harder. After that, it's like, all right, great job, right? We got it. I'm going to go ahead and pop one of these guys, pop one of these guys, Memento Mori, draw. This is much slower, but I do want to do it. Play it out. Do it again. Great work. Continue. I want to get to like 200 or something before I really start doing this because it does kind of drag pretty hard. <laughs> right? This is kind of a drag if I'm being honest with you. 170. We'll kill another couple things. Pop a guy out. Great. Shoot a guy. Great. Cool. Mento Mori doing 190. I think once we get to 200, I'll feel fine about it. Cool. We pop it. We do the Remnant Host. I'm going to shoot that Remnant Host one final time. 210. Sure, this is enough. And now we just cook them, right? Memento Mori, draw. Memento Mori, draw is good. I can actually do this with my keyboard to make it even a little faster, which is definitely right. Yeah, for sure. Just cook them. Get him out of here. All right, we have it. This is fast enough for me. So, yeah, cool. It's pretty straightforward, honestly. The fact that Memento Mori is the payout is actually extremely funny. I rag on this card a lot. The problem with the card is actually not that it's bad. It's that it's slow, right? It's based on something that's very hard to scale yourself fast early on. It's like, all right, great. So, uh, in this case, it's cheap, and I also have remnant host in the mix so it's not impossible to achieve but oftentimes this thing at best is maybe a what is it like a crit builder like six of your units die and that's fine right because it's it's friendly units it's not all enemies so it's like sometimes this is just really bad and it's three cost too which is pretty excruciating it's just not good trades most of the time now obviously in cases like this it works out great right i'm just gonna win the run with a memento mori here just slam dunk this man easy that's a turn two kill that's one of the highest scores i'm gonna have gotten in a while that's wild fun we didn't get it on turn one because it's draw orders right that's the only thing is i could have removed more cards in order to ensure the turn one so if i was chasing score you would have wanted to do that right but whatever 
this is already going to be like one of my top scoring runs of all time. Like it's 200 shards and I got an eight turn on everything. So like, yeah, okay. that's honestly not actually as good as I've had before, but this is still really strong. 75 K for a 200 shard run is just awesome. Eight turn, nine turn on chase, really powerful setup. And like the early game was a bit dicey still, right? We took some damage in some places, but anyway, I've pretty much had the opportunity to explain the entire run and all of my commentary that I was going to give you here because of an infinite that I didn't have to think through. So fair enough. Anyway, incredible. We have the Memento Mori infinite. Wow. Haven't had one of those before, but it makes sense that it worked here. So I guess I'm going to let you go. The shatter, by the way, shattered shell, that sapstone felt good on divinity. I'm glad it vindicated me, even though I wasn't even relying on him to win anymore. Think about this. If I didn't have the stupid infinite, right? I would have had a second one of these guys I would have dropped them in. It would have been great. Guy would have divinity would have dealt one damage, just enough to keep my 10 health guy alive. Feels good. You could have also on lower shards. This would have reduced him to like zero damage almost with two of them anyway they would have definitely gone to zero but with one of them you get pretty close to it it would be like three damage or something and then all it takes is me playing like a drag upstairs or something and suddenly he's scaling his health from the baron faster than the sap is wearing off so it basically guarantees victory there's no reason to go for sunderstone we had plenty of damage we would that was never a risk and then obviously we saw an infinite and so whatever that be, that became the run i guess Anyway, I don't have anything else to add. That's an infinite on the channel. Let's go, baby. All right. Well, I, I'll let you go there. Excellent run. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.